so at the outset i would like to thank lv sir and uh, ajanta pharma to having me here so thank you for your kind words as always okay so i think uh, by starting this uh, you know talk of my prophylaxis uh sir i think we are uh, you know retinal detachment might become less from tomorrow onwards because we are teaching uh, good prophylaxis of retinal detachment sir so uh, at the uh, i mean to start with yes prophylaxis uh, would definitely like a panelly they better than the cure that is prevention so as we all know i think uh, the most important thing what we get in our uh, you know clinics when we have something a picture like this everybody starts having some kind of a flashes and our all our ophthalmologists as i think believe that this yes this is something a fearing uh, entity in the clinics so as the uh, it's basically a regma means a break and it speaks to detachment being rooted in the full thickness deficits in the neurosensory retina so we have non traumatic phacocardias occurring almost 1 in 10000 persons per year so the main crucial event being the posterior vitreous detachment so we have to basically learn what exactly happens and uh, the image would have the synapses as we can see here so most of 15% are associated with a break and 50 to 70% with vitreous hemorrhage 10 to 12% without a vitreous hemorrhage retinal tears may be unique or multiple and these multiple tears may occur simultaneously or subsequently in the evolution of pvd delayed retinal tears may develop and well these tears could be complicated by retinal detachment in 30 to 50% of the cases so the most important thing identify the high risk factors and uh, well at an early stage examine early and refer early so these three early will always help us having uh, you know detected these patients at a very early level so the symptom being acute onset of floaters flashes defect in visual fields subjective visual reduction and presence of vitreous hemorrhage or pigment so to note here is uncomplicated pvd may develop you know into a retinal tear within 6 weeks and that is the point where you know just having a examined a patient nicely in an indirect ophthalmoscope having a pvd but you know calling the patient uh, as we think that okay nothing is there so we can just call the patient later on no i think 3.4 percent will have a new retinal tear in within this 6 weeks so it's better that we keep the patient under follow up the most important risk factors axial myopia lattice degeneration contralateral rrd grt ocular toma uh, complicated cataract surgery strong family history colobomas nd arc laser capsulotomies retinitis and chororetinitis to start with a few uh, i mean uh, the most important among them is myopia so myopia has a direct relationship with the you know uh, with the risk of retinal detachment high myopia being almost 10 times it increases the risk and for, it constitutes almost 40 per 42 percent of all rrds another one is lattice degeneration well it's important here to understand that incidence of rt is almost less than 1 percent if rd has not occurred in the other eye well it almost doubles up to 2 to 5 percent when rd has occurred in the other eye so that is one of the most important factors to be considered when we are planning a you know for prophylaxis for retinal detachment and lattice degen in our clinics again a giant retinal tear would have uh, lead to retinal breaks in the fellow eye in almost 50% of the cases and thus prophylactic treatment of the fellow eye with 360 degree retinal laser has been seen to dec decrease the incidence of retinal tears and retinal detachments in uh, the other eye significantly cataract surgery per se no i would say it has very low incidence of uh, retinal detachment but but anywhere we have a complicated surgery it increases the risk of retinal detachment to 5% so nd arc laser again it increases the risk of almost 4 to 5 uh, times and contralateral rd yes it increases the risk of retinal detachment in the other eye so we have to be careful in uh, all these entities too some predisposing lesions being holes dialysis tears again lattice with holes lattice is per se alone so some facts uh, you know i think these are the hard facts to understand uh, prophylactic laser yes it has a very widespread use i think uh, none of us would be you know uh, mind to say that it has no uh, non uh, evidence based prophylactic laser treatment has been practiced remains a clinical and economical issue that must be addressed well the majority of the studies which have occurred the, there is a big flaw there that the absence of a discussion of the state of the vitreous gel so a pvd as i said initially only would make a big difference whether the pvd has occurred or not which will actually decide whether you have to treat or not 
So methods of prophylaxis as uh, I think barrage laser and cryotherapy wherever it is needed wherever we have a hazy media we can always go for a cryo laser cryotherapy and uh, plan accordingly and one of um, uh, some examples of how do we do laser uh, and we can either in sarcolages or limited. So again, there's a limitation of prophylaxis. Most RDs, which are be because of retinal tears that develop in the areas of retina that appear per normal prior to the vitreous detachment. And well, treatment of visible lesions, what we actually do in our clinics associated with an RD may prevent a tear at those sites, but mind it, not a tear in normal appearing retina. So then we may have uh, RDs, which probably, you know, even after barrage and the tears may, you know, be there at some other places actually where there was nothing actually so all symptomatic should be treated asymptomatic treated only if there are otherwise uh, rd operated for rd strong family history a fakia complicated cataract surgery planned cataract surgery refractive surgery or benign patients well here there were some guidelines as per ao and we can see here or what i have highlighted all asymptomatic horseshoe tears asymptomatic tears asymptomatic atrophic holes uh, lattice de de degeneration with holes and even dialysis in that stage asymptomatic they are as per academy they are rarely treated or they are not recommended or no consensus or treatment and uh, insufficient i think we would as here in indians like we would def differ from here as I, I don't think any one of us would not treat this uh, you know at least these uh, conditions in our scenarios so some special situations I'll touch on, that's uh, before cataract surgery, I think everybody wants to know, well, cataract surgery per se, if a simple cataract surgery is not an indication for prophylaxis, but when we do a cataract in a myopic patient, as such myopic patients have increased, uh, you know, risk of detachment incidence, and so phacoemulsification definitely increases the risk of detachment in high myopic patients, and thus treatment significantly reduces the risk. So we as we understand that yes, high myopes, we can plan a prophylaxis before the surgery. Again, something similar for the refractive surgery. So refractive surgery per se is not a contradictory factor, but then again, myopias have anyways a high risk. And then we, if we don't do such, uh, you know, predisposed lesions, then it is always a higher risk in what we are taking. Coming to LASIK, yes, again, uh, docking and docking, you know, increase the intraocular pressure and then that can cause an in induction of PBT. And then that is the reason where we have to do a prophylactic treatment, which may not prevent actually all post LASIK midodetin complications. Co coloboma, we definitely do as our risk almost in decreases to 2.9% as what we have routinely is 24.1%. So that is a, uh, definitely an indication. Again, before NDE ag laser, the five months are very crucial as that is the more important phase when we do la laser, we may have four to five time increased risk of RD or breaks. Well, uh, just shifting a little uh, from the most common cause of uh, most common prophylaxis, the, we are talking about prophylaxis of ARMD. Well, all of us know that there's an errors formula. We all, and along with no smoking, we can reduce the risk to almost 25% over five, uh, five years. So the most, again, this combination of ARIDS2, we have seen that it has favored treatment in all the cases of advanced AMD, neovascular AMD, and central geographical atrophy. Prophylaxis of cystoid macular edema, well, in all complicated cases, yes, there is definitely a role in uh, retinal vein occlusion, the epiretinal membrane, the, it increases incidence to 32 and 5 times. Common practice is to start an NSAID before, well, it can be added with a topical steroid or a carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and which will always help in our cases. Diabetic retinopathy, yes, we can say it has, again, some prophylaxis we can do by primary prevention, improving awareness, lifestyle changes, medications to control risk factors, and systemic screening. Uh, secondary prevention would be medications to control risk factors, regular screening to monitor for progression of DR, and guidelines for managing diabetic retinopathy. And tertiary prevention, definitely when we have vision, uh, you know, uh, this thing then we have to do for an ocular treatment and visual rehabilitation. So to conclude, I think, uh, well, this is, uh, uh, there are many indications which are still debatable and I think that can have a big debate on what to do and what when not to do. So I think we should say weigh the risk, benefits, counsel well and manage well. Thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. Uh, actually, we never wanted debate on a topic. We wanted a very clear-cut answer. So, who wants to do it, who wants to do it. And I think uh, 
एंड इंडिया इज नो डिफरेंट दैन अमेरिकन अकेडमी दैट उनकी आंखें ज़्यादा प्रेशियस और हमारी कम प्रेशियस है सो वी शुड हैव वेरी वेरी क्लियर गाइडलाइंस एंड आई थिंक माई मैसेज वुड बी दैट ऑल लेटेस इज नीड नॉट बी लेजर्ड ऑल एट्रोफिक होल्स शुड नॉट बी लेजर्ड एंड एच ऑल एच एस टीज शुड बी लेजर्ड ऑल सिम्टोमेटिक एच एस शुड बी लेजर्ड फेलो आई डेफिनेटली येस बट वॉट आई सी इन प्रैक्टिस इज छोटा छोटा पिगमेंट भी हो गया लोग उसको लेजर लेजर यू सी फाइनेंस इज ऑन वन साइड बट साइंस इन अदर साइड सो साइंटिफिकली स्पीकिंग ओनली दीज आर दी इंडिकेज फॉर लेजर एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉज एयर एम डी विच यू जस्ट यू नो फ्लिप वन स्लाइड बिकॉज आई सी इन एयर एम डी प्रोफिलेक्सिस फॉर दी अदर आई पीपल विल राइट ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट्स आई विल नॉट नेम बिकॉज कंपनी पीपल आर ऑल हेयर the because the antioxidant has to be in a specific dosage what it is taught us it is 1 and it is 2 the difference was in it is 1 we had vitamin a and it is 2 we had the lutein and zeaxanthin yeah I'll and they just... have to be present in a specific dose only then only there is a reduction of around 25 26% otherwise uh, believe me if you start writing any anti antioxidant it does not work at all and very frequent question is how long to be given you know initially it was a very confusing answer but now people say life long which we should be given life long antioxidants and believe me this lutein has to be 10 mg zeaxanthin 2 mg vitamin c 500 mg vitamin e 400 units zinc oxide 80 mg and cuprosite 2 mg if your formulation does not have this please don't prescribe just to you know please uh, company people over please have this antioxidant formula always be there So with this we'll thank because time is not on our yeah, side. Yeah, sure. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, thank you.